and welcome to the second installment of Cooking Commentary. If you're new here, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. This segment is where I get to review all the foods I ate this week and grade them on an ABC scale. Last week I was very strict with how I graded it and I do have a criteria for how I grade them, but I'm gonna be a little bit more lenient this week. Last week I was really trying to hit home to myself how badly I was doing, so I had to make sure that there was no room for nuance, shall we say. But I think that there is a little bit of room for understanding and forgiveness when approaching a total lifestyle change. <laughs> so this week we will go over the criteria quickly, but just be mindful that I am going to be adding some pluses and minuses to these grades. And at the end of it, I will give you my overall weekly score. So let's take a real quick look at what the criteria is going to be. All right, so for an A, there's gonna be a calorie deficit. Be recording either by my net diary or by video camera. Food needs to be homemade. I have to hit 87 grams of protein per day and no substitutes such as bagels, keto bread, protein powder, etc. For an A, I basically have to be making all my foods and trying to get all of my calories and protein in through natural, unprocessed foods. So I will probably never be seeing an A. For a B, it allows substitutes, so I can have my bagel or keto bread. For a C, I don't get enough protein. For a D, it's not homemade, and there's some guesswork on if there is actually a calorie deficit. And for an F, I need to not be in a calorie deficit or not be recording it, because who knows if I'm in a calorie deficit if I'm not recording it. So now that we have our criteria out of the way, let's roll some clips. All right, so we're off to a better start than last week because I actually recorded Sunday. And Stephen was the one making breakfast. It was 525 calories with 26 grams of protein. He's got some eggs, he's got some onions, some spinach, the mozzarella cheese I did not have. And here you can see that my sausages are a little burnt. Stephen knows that I like them burnt. And I think it's really sweet that even though he doesn't like them burnt and he doesn't really like to cook things that are burnt. And I mean, who really likes to burn food that they're cooking? But I think it's sweet that he does it for me. I mean, they're not as burnt as I would have done them, but they're close. Oh, this is just Poe being cute, and I really wanted to show you guys how adorable he is. Look at that nose. Okay, so here I am about to drink some alcohol. <laughs> I really like the vanilla Jim Beam with some hot cocoa. Kind of feels like Christmas in spring. And this was when I realized that I had started my period again. And I seriously feel like I'm going a bit crazy with the constant and unexpected periods, the hormonal changes and like even the zits, like me constantly breaking out, it's just messing with my head a bit. And I have been coping with alcohol on that. So this is what you see for Sunday, but you shouldn't see any more alcohol in my footage for the next two weeks, maybe. It is St. Patty's Day, we will see. I am measuring out the alcohol at least. Okay, and so for dinner, Stephen cooked, and that is cube steak. The calorie count on the cube steak was surprisingly low. I got 39 grams of protein from it with only 230 calories. That's because cube steak doesn't have a lot of fat or marbling, making it a lean cut. So this comes from the rear end of the cattle. So it can be a bit tougher and chewier than other cuts. You gotta make sure you cook it right. And a lot of people recommend it as chicken fried steak with some gravy. So I'm really hoping that I can find a healthy recipe that will fit into the plan. All right, so looking at Sunday, I had a healthy breakfast, a healthy dinner, uh, but then I had alcohol. I was at 1,224 calories with 77 protein. I did not hit my protein goals. I also used a sugar-free hot cocoa mix. That's gonna put me at a C. I'm gonna put it at a C minus because there was alcohol. All right, so for Monday, I started out wanting to have a teriyaki chicken with peas and edamame. I saw that I didn't hit my protein goals and I really wanted to make up for it. Uh, it really wasn't that good of a meal to start out the day with. It was 750 calories uh, just for some chicken and some legumes really didn't leave me with a lot of room to work with calories for later in the day. And then here my period cravings hit and I tried blueberries, uh, peanut butter and jelly, keto bread sandwich. Then I tried some apple cinnamon oatmeal, which would have left me at my calorie count, but I still wanted something. So I got heart-shaped chicken nuggets. <laughs> my cravings were finally satiated at least. Okay, so keto bread would have knocked me down to a B to begin with. I got 1,727 calories and 121 protein. So this is gonna be a D minus. 
technically I am still in a calorie deficit at that calorie count. My maintenance is 1800, so anything below that is technically a deficit. I also was struggling with my period, but I didn't eat chocolate. I didn't go to McDonald's. I'm gonna consider it a win. And so for that, D minus. All right, starting with slapping down some lettuce, cool. So Tuesday I had planned a different breakfast the night before, but when I woke up, I wanted Parmesan cheese. Like I just knew I had to have Parmesan cheese that morning. So I ended up switching up the plan and settling for a tuna salad with a diced apple. I love adding a fruit to my tuna salads. It kind of like balances out the saltiness that you'll get from the Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah, that's just the perfect mixture right there. Okay, so the honey mustard dressing. It tastes amazing, but the calorie count for all that dressing was higher than two cans of tuna. I mean, I got a lot of fat with it, so I'm not mad at it, but it's something to keep in mind when calorie counting. So that tomato soup actually has five grams of protein per cup. It's organic tomato soup by Pacific. And when Steven went to the store to get me tomato soup, because I was like, hey, I, I want, I'm craving tomato soup. He brought home like six different brands and flavors and I thought he was being just like a silly smart ass but he was actually just being super considerate. It's a toss up with him sometimes if he's trolling or just being a sweetheart. He was being a sweetheart this time. Uh, anyway, I checked all the other cans and brands that he brought home and the organic soup from Pacific was the only one that had five grams of protein. All the others had like two or three. And frankly, I was surprised to even know that tomato soup had protein, but if you are going to do tomato soup, I suggest this one. It also had a lower calorie count than all the rest. Uh, okay, so, okay, so it seems as though I forgot to record Stephen making the cube steak and zucchini for dinner again, because here is a shot of my blueberries, and I know I had that after I ate. <laughs> But I did record it on my net diary. I just forgot to film it. So I was at 1,315 calories and 95 protein. The tortilla, the dressing, and honestly, I'm realizing the white sugar in my morning coffee every single day is automatically gonna put me at a B. So <laughs> we're at a B. On to Wednesday. Okay, so here is where I started testing shrimp with eggs. I really wanted to sneak in more protein with my eggs and I was actually really worried about how this would turn out. I really thought I was making something crazy here and it turns out that it's actually a pretty popular dish, putting eggs and shrimp together. It's just three boiled eggs, some shrimp, and some mayonnaise, and I used the Cajun seasoning on the shrimp. Ah yes, the feta cheese. I hated the feta cheese with it. It just wasn't needed and wasn't the right addition. Frozen blueberries on a waffle with some syrup and sausage, always a great idea. I could never smoothly undo those bags. Uh, so this is a dish that I have been thinking about for a couple weeks. I was trying to get a bit more adventurous with my meals, but it turns out that this too is also a pretty popular dish. If anything, I would have changed the brand of the smoked salmon. I opted for the cheaper brand and I really think I didn't like the smoking process. Like different brands will use different woods, smoking temperatures and exposure and all of that will affect the flavor and this just wasn't it. I have another pack of it too, so I need to use it eventually. It's a good thing it's gonna keep for a while. <laughs> okay, so for Wednesday, I got 1,320 calories and 83 grams of protein. I'm gonna put it out as a B minus. I use substitutes and I barely missed my protein goal. So it should be a C, but I'm gonna give a little bit of nuance there, put myself up to a B minus. All right, so Thursday I am doing the shrimp and eggs again. And I know I like them, now I just wanna test how I like them. It's like playing a little bit of The Runaway Bride. Many different ways to cook an egg, how do I like it? And that's basically what we're gonna see for the rest of the week. Me trying different ways of putting egg and shrimp together. Also, I really wanted to get some spinach in this morning. It's full of micronutrients and major and minor minerals. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting in spinach at least once a week. And my smoothies are my favorite way to get in that spinach. Ah, with the protein powder, <laughs> I'm learning first milk, then the powder, then the yogurt. It'll prevent that powder from blowing everywhere. So this is going to be ricotta cheese, boiled eggs, and shrimp with the Cajun seasoning. Uh, it is perfection. Hands down, this is the pairing I love the most. And Thursday started out great. I had like 550 calories left for the day. And I knew we were having steak for dinner and after eating cube steak twice that week, I thought I was in the clear. Absolutely no way I would go over, right? That would be incorrect. 
So you really have to pay attention to the calories of the cut of the beef. This cut right here is a beef ribeye steak. Looks exactly like this one. I mean, they paint their steaks to have a certain color, but it's the same. This was 260 grams. I had to weigh the bone and fat pieces that I cut off separately. And this is 820 calories. It tasted amazing. Steven cooked it with a touch of soy sauce and wasabi. And this was definitely my favorite steak that I have like ever eaten in my entire life. So there was absolutely no way I wasn't going to eat this entire serving. It was put in front of me, it tasted amazing, I was gonna eat it all. But it did make me realize that with pre-planned dinners, I need to be plugging that into my net diary before I even plan my breakfast. So it was a good learning experience and I'm gonna click off of this now because it is making me hungry just looking at it again. It was amazing. So thanks to that steak, I ended at 1,625 calories and 124 grams of protein. Should be an F. I'm gonna give myself a D minus. Friday, I'm doing the shrimp and eggs again. These are Steven's breakfast strawberries and I didn't have them, but I had to show them because look at how like beautiful and red they are. I did have like two throughout the entire week, so I didn't count them. But they were, like, strawberries are in season right now. Go get yourself some. It was, they were good. I gotta say, I love these blueberry bagels. You get 12 grams of protein. My only problem with them is that they are a processed food and there is like nine grams of additional sugars in with them. And I prefer to get most of my carbs from complex carbs. So here I am trying my shrimp and eggs in a scrambled egg form. I don't know why I tried it this way because I don't like scrambled eggs. Like the closest I get to liking scrambled eggs is when Steven makes the omelets. So it is no surprise here that I didn't like them that way. Okay, so for dinner, I did chicken hearts. So Steven and I went to a Brazilian restaurant where they basically bring out different meats on a rotation and they had chicken hearts. And when I tried them, I realized, oh my God, I love chicken hearts. And they're super cheap. You just simmer them, add some onion, add some garlic, little salt and pepper. I like it with paprika. They're amazing. I love the texture. I love the taste. I love everything about them. They are high in cholesterol, so people at risk of heart disease need to be careful. But these guys are rich in protein, zinc, iron, B vitamins, and they also fight food waste. And I paired it with a sweet potato because the chicken hearts can be a bit rich. So these are a good palate cleanser. So Friday, I ended at 1,422 calories and 105 grams of protein. Still in a calorie deficit, just not the one I want to be at. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did have, or record, I did have blueberries. And then Steven got me these little seaweed snack packs that are 35 calories. And it's just seasoned seaweed, basically. I'm going to put that at a B, just because the bagel. Last day of the week. So for Saturday, I originally thought I was gonna start out with a bagel, a smoothie, and some sausages. I figured busy day, quick breakfast, complex carbs. Uh, but then I remembered the previous day's mistake. And I knew we were going to have sashimi again with artichoke and some miso soup. So after plugging in my dinner before making my breakfast, I realized I needed to take out the sausages and the peanut butter from my smoothie. I knew my dinner was gonna hit me with my protein goals, so the sausage and peanut butter just wasn't needed. But how did the smoothie taste, is what you ask? So actually, after a few sips, I realized I didn't like it. It tasted very artificial, and I don't know if it's the brand of the protein powder, but it definitely needed that peanut butter. So just a bagel and smoothie. So for dinner, we had the last of the salmon for sushi. We do have one tuna filet left. Then sushi days are gonna be over until my birthday in November. And here you're gonna see granules on the fish. So Steven has done a four hour class on how to make sushi, but this is not something he learned in it. This is called curing the salmon. So you add salt and sugar, leave it for 15 minutes and then rinse it off. This changes the texture and pulls out the liquid. You can see here that the texture is already changing in tad bit. I think this was after two minutes. And so if you're cooking artichoke, you need to nip the tip and the stem and steam it for roughly about 30 minutes. And you can tell when they're done when you can easily push a fork in through the stem, which if you see here, rock hard. And I really love this miso soup. The texture of the seaweed is very pleasing to me. Uh, some brands feel too soggy, others too rough. And just like the Littlest Bear soup, this one is perfect. So here you can see that the fish is actually starting to sweat. You see that liquid coming off of it. It is almost done. There's liquid on the sides there. That is the fish sweating. 
And here is where you will see that the artichokes are done now that you can push that fork in. And I just recently bought those miso soup spoons from Amazon for like nine bucks. I was really sick of using regular spoons with it. There is just something about miso soup that calls for a miso soup spoon. But that was how I ended my meals for the week and it was perfect, I think. Let's just double check. I ended at 1,337 calories with 96 protein. I had that blueberry bagel, so that'll put me at a B. Uh, but I loved that meal. I thought that day did really good. I'm gonna put it at a B plus. All right, let's tally this up and see how I did. I think I graded last week as a D, and this week is a C. I mean, it's better than last week. I'm actually feeling pretty happy about it. My weight is down, my grade is up, and that's good enough for me. Let me know in the comments how you think I did, if there's anything that you would have improved on, any meals you think I should try, I hope you guys had a very safe St. Patty's Day, and remember, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!